Hi budding engineers, welcome to Structure Engineering Lectures and welcome to the new playlist on the design of shell structures. In today's class, we shall see the design of compression member as a strut, design of single angle strut problems, right? This is how uh, we will see a design of a single angle uh, which is connected with means of uh, one bolt or two bolts, one bolt or two bolts like this, right? In the previous class, we have seen, we have seen, seen the design of a compression member as a column, stanchion, like this, right? Wherein we have seen how to select a suitable eye section, suitable eye section like this, right? Uh, I think you are enjoying the discussions, what we are having on YouTube. Thanks for watching. You will now subscribe, like, share, comment on YouTube channel, right? Now, before we see the actual discussion, let us see the three formula of the speaker that is my doctor, Dear Rupesh Kumar, has obtained a BTEC civil engineering from Nagara University in 1994, MTEC structural engineering from uh, JNTU. Hyderabad in 2000 and PhD, Structural Engineering from JNU Hyderabad in 2009. Presently, I am working as a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering, University College of Engineering, Osman University, Hyderabad, Telangana State. I have an experience of 27 years, of which 7 years is in industry and 20 years is in teaching and research at graduate, postgraduate levels. My research areas include reinforced design, concrete designs, steel structural designs, structural analysis, fine element analysis, earthquake engineering, bridge engineering, structural optimization. I have published 45 research papers in international as well as national journals and conferences, organized three international conferences and 11 national conferences and workshops. I have attended 43 workshops, visited two countries, delivered 30 guest lectures, edited, edited three books. As supervising 14 PhD scholars and supervising 30 ME theses. I have been actively involved in various consultancy work that are offered by the department and completed over 750 design tool checks and 150 designs. The reinforced system concrete design, steel, composite, low rise, high rise, multi stone buildings, as well as road and rail bridges. Now, once we see this discussion, student, let us move quickly to the topic of what we are discussing in today's class. Right? This is how uh, we will discuss how to design a strut. Right now, what I am showing is if I take a bridge truss, right? Bridge truss. Obviously, after analysis, either we will get the member forces in the bridge truss as either, either compression, right? Compression or tension, right? Right? And a reversal of stresses cases that compression number itself will become a tension, right? Therefore, that is how these are the bridge truss wherein we will be uh, proposing the sections using either single angle or double angle connected to one side of a gazette plate, right? Gazette plate, right? These are the uh, bridge truss, right? This is um, uh, a 300 meter long single lane steel cable suspension bridge, student, which is called the Byron Bridge along the Siang River, uh, located in Arunachal Pradesh of uh, India, which is commissioned in 2019, right? Now, uh, this is how even we may be using uh, two angles back to back. Just now I have shown here that these these are two angles back to back, right? As used as struts, right? Therefore, or we may also be using we may also be using right uh, these uh, 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 single angles or double angles as struts in the case of roof trusses. Now I am showing a roof truss where this is what called the. the Principal uh, rafter, right? Principal rafter, where this is what called the prime uh, principal uh, principal compression member. At the bottom, I have the principal tie, principal tie, right? Main tie. And after analysis, either I'll get this as a strut compression member, and these are the ties, right? Therefore, this is what called the strut and tie model, strut and tie model. Therefore, this is how a strut a strut is connected to one side of a gazette plate use, using single angle or even it could be using double angles also right now uh, let us see uh, this is how i'm just showing an uh, example uh, building where it i do have right the strut as well as the tie right the strut and tie model right this is how a roof truss building right a roof truss and uh, and the schematic of the same right this is how uh, um, principal rafter and uh, uh, the main tie or bottom card member tie member right and this is how the webs are these are called the struts and tie strut and tie model right for a roof truss a schematic right or uh, there we may also be using these members as single angle single angle connected to one side of a gazette test right, right like this right what now i'm showing the schematic is like this right? i'm showing it um, uh, uh, front as well as the side view 
the side view of the same, right? Uh, either connected by means of single bolt or maybe connected by means of two bolts like this, right? Not either connected by means of a single bolt like this or connected by two bolts, right? Like this, two bolts, two bolts, two one side of it. As a bit. Now let us see uh, a new problem student. Then you will understand what we are trying to do, right? Uh, wherein we will do the two types of problems, right? One, one is that uh, uh, in the first problem we will try to we will try to uh, find out the section is given. We will try to find out the, the design compressive strength of such, such section. Whereas in the second problem. The second problem load acting on the member is given we need to propose the section propose the section uh, angle section and propose the number of bolts propose the number of bolts and check the adequacy for the applied load for the whether it can bear the applied uh, uh, factored load or not right those are the second problem student now let us see the very first problem student right? this is the first problem uh, an isa Indian standard angle 100 by 100 by 6 mm is used as a strut in a truss in a truss right now already shown a truss in the previous uh, figure right the length of this uh, strut between the intersections at each end is 3 meter like this right this is how 3 meter right calculate the strength of the strut if first bit is connected by means of two bolts at each end like this two bolts right and second bit, if it is connected by means of one bolt at each end, at each end. Third bit is if it is if it is welded at each end, right? Use FE410 grade steel, FE410 grade steel, right? That is how the very first bit student, right? Uh, wherein if it is connected by means of two bolts, that is how the schematic, right? Uh, I do have the angle connected to one side of a gazette plate, one side of a gazette plate, student, that is how the side view as well as the front view, whereas I do have the two bolts like this, right? Two bolts, right? So you can see I'm showing right one one bolt as well as the second bolt, right? Like this, right? So if it is connected by itself, two bolts, two bolts, right? Then or even I'm showing the same, right? Like this. Whereas whereas this part is the gazette plate, the gazette plate, and this is the angle. This is that angle, right? Whereas this outstanding leg is 100 mm as well as as well as the connected leg is also 100 mm and its thickness is equal to 6 mm. This is of the given data student. Right? Now let us see the given data uh, for if you 410 grade steel, if you 410 grade steel, I do have the yield stress of the steel is equal to 250 Newton per mm square and the partial safety factor for this yield stress is equal to 1.1 and from SP61, SP61, right? Um, ISA handbook 1, page number uh, uh, 10 for ISA. 100 by 100 by 6 mm. Now let me uh, visit to that uh, page number 10 of SP61 student, right? ISA um, 100 by 100 by uh, this one, right? Uh, 100, 100 by 100 by uh, 6 mm. I do have the area 1167, 100, 100, 6, right? 100, 100, 6. Let us see the relevant property student, right? 100, 100 is the very first one, right? Wherein the area is equal to 1167 centimeter square. And the weight for unit length is equal to 9.2 kg per meter. And uh, 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 the other relevant properties are like this, right? Now, now let me check the other relevant properties, right? Whereas uh, I am interested of ra radius of variation, radius of variation, therefore, the radius of variation about xx axis is equal to uh, about uh, major axis is equal to minor axis, both are same, major axis minor axis 3.38 centimeter and about uh, um, major principal axis it is 4.28 centimeter whereas minor principal axis it is um, sorry i'm sorry student right? for is uh, isa 100 by 100 by 6 mm uh, rxx is equal to ryy is equal to 30.9 and ruu is equal to 39.1 and rvv the radius of variation about minor principal axis is equal to 19.5 mm. 19.5 mm. Therefore, once I note down these properties, I just uh, noted those properties here, right? Therefore, area Rxx and Ry, Ruu, Rvv, out of which all this, the minimum radius of variation, R min, is equal to 19.5, which is about the minor principal axis. And its length is given as 
3 meter it is given as 3 meter like this right this length is given as 3 meter and what is also uh, given the very first bit if it is connected by means of two bolts if it is connected by means of two bolts like this right two bolts right if it is connected by means of two bolts then how uh, how much of load carrying capacity how much of the load carrying capacity right and that is what i am trying to do I have shown the uh, cross section also that is seen here 100 mm, 100 mm by 6 mm thick, right? And in front view also that is shown, right? Now, very first bit each end is connected by means of two bolts like this using two bolts, first bolt and second bolt, right? Or you may see like this, right? It is connected to one side of a gazette bit using one bolt here, one bolt here, right? Then, however, since this IS 800 2007 is silent on the effective length of the single angle studs. Now, what I'll assume is the effective length factor k is equal to 1. Therefore, the effective length itself is the actual length is equal to 3 meter or 3000 mm. And furthermore, furthermore, here uh, what is given is that uh, if it is connected by means of two bolts, two bolts, right? Therefore, now let me let me uh, see, let me see if I have to have the two bolts which are assumed to be fixed, right? That is my first assumption, assuming the ends to be fixed. It is possible only if the bolts, the bolts are high strength friction grip bolts. If at all, we are using high strength friction grip bolts like this student, then, then only two bolts, only just two bolts will have sufficient fixity, sufficient fixity. Therefore, now I can assume the ends, the ends to be fixed. These two ends to be fixed, right? Because now the uh, load is uh, um, transferred only by means of the friction, right? Therefore, that is all they are presumed to be fixed, right? And if I go, if I go to IS 800 2007 class 7.5.1.2 page number 48. Let me just revisit that, right? 48 um, of uh, this IS 800, right? What now I have is a loaded through one leg only because now we are designing the uh, single angle connected to one side of a gazette plate, therefore it is loaded through one leg only. Therefore, that the flexural torsional buckling strength of single angle loaded compression member through one of its leg may be evaluated using this equivalence thinness ratio lambda e, which is given by square root of k1 plus k2 lambda vv square plus k3 lambda psi whole square where k1 k2 k3 are the constant depending uh, depending upon the condition as given in the table 12 we will see that where lambda vv is the standard ratio about vv axis l by r vv divided by epsilon square root of pi square e divided by 250 and as well as lambda psi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 divided by 2t divided by epsilon square root of pi square e not epsilon student divided by 250 where l is the center to center length of of the supporting members and RVV is the radius of variation about the minor axis and B1, B2 are the widths of the two legs of the angle, right? These two legs, right? B1 and B2 and it is the thickness and epsilon is the yield stress ratio given by square root of 250 divided by Fi and these constants K1, K2, K3 are given this table 12, right? Table 12. Now we are having two or more number of bolts and we are assuming that it is a fixed Right, it is a fixed because we are assuming it to be connected by means of this high strength friction grip bolt, high strength friction grip bolt, not ordinary black bolts. We will see that bit also later. Therefore, from this code book, now I will note down uh, K1 is equal to 0.2 and K2 is equal to 0.35 and K3 is equal to 20. 20. Therefore, I just noted uh, those values right as K1, K2, K3 is right because uh, it is assumed to be fixed, right. And this equivalence tendency ratio formula also we have seen. And this epsilon is equal to square root of two, uh, 250 divided by Fy, whereas we are using the steel of grade 250. Therefore, substituting which now we will get uh, this uh, stress ratio as 1. And substituting these uh, numeric values, now I do have uh, standard ratio about minor axis lambda vv is equal to l by r vv divided by epsilon square root of pi square e divided by 250 whereas uh, effective length itself is 3000 mm and r vv r min is equal to 19.5 and 1 multiplied by uh, square root of pi square multiplied by young smallness of the steel is is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per mm square divided by 250 it works out say 1.731 1.731 now 
Similarly, lambda psi is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2, whereas beta 1 is this uh, length 100 mm as well as uh, length of the connected leg beta 1 and length of this outstanding leg beta 2, both are 100 and 100 and its thickness is equal to 6 mm, 6 mm. That divided by 1 multiplied square root of pi square multiplied by uh, 2 into the power 5 divided by 250. It works out say 0 0.1875. Therefore, the effective strength ratio upon substitution into this formula, it works out square root of 0.2 plus 0.3 multiplied by 1.731 whole square plus 20 multiplied by 0.1875 whole square. It works out say 1.397. However, from class 7.1.2.1, page number 34. Let me go to that page number 34, student. Uh, from IS 800, page number 34. Yes, and uh, now I'll move to page number 34. Right? Uh, yes, page number 34. Therefore, now it says the design compressive stress FCD of axially loaded compression member shall be calculated using this formula. FCD is equal to FY divided by gamma M0 divided by pi. Um, plus square root, uh, square root of pi square minus lambda square which is equal to uh, roman x fi divided by gamma m0 which should be less than or equal to fi divided by uh, gamma m0 where this roman x is the stress reduction factor and where pi is 0.5 multiplied by 1 plus alpha multiplied by lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda square where lambda is non-dimensional non effective slenderness ratio please make a note it is non-dimensional right which is given by square root of fi it is a the ratio of these stresses, square root of yield stress to the Euler's buckling stress, square root of Fi divided by FCC, which is where uh, this FCC is Euler's buckling stress given by pi square e divided by lambda square or KL by R whole square, where KL by R is the effective standard ratio. Uh, 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 KL to appropriate radius of variation R and alpha is the imperfection factor given in the table uh, 7 and uh, X is the stress reduction factor given by 1 divided by 1, uh, 1 divided by pi plus square root of pi square minus lambda square and lambda m naught is a partial safety factor for the material strength for the material strength right this is how I am just recalling this formula student wherein wherein now after recalling this therefore the design comes to strength I will just recall this formula whereas now if I go to this uh, table table 44 let me go to this uh, uh, sorry table 10 page number 44 right now uh, from IS 800 from IS 800 right uh, uh, yeah right uh, this is uh, table ta uh, one moment student right this is a table 10 page 44 table 10 page 44 right uh, page number 44 Yes, 44 means uh, this is uh, 44. Yes, therefore here I do have the buckling class of the cross section. Whereas what is given in the problem is a an angle section is given. Therefore that angle section here is seen as this angle section about any axis. The buckling class is C for the angle section. Therefore I am just recalling this and and for this angle section about any axis the buckling class is equal to c and also now let me go to this uh, table 7 page number 35 student right wherein for buckling class c what is the imperfection factor from page number 35 let me go back to this page number 35 student right yes uh, page number 35 mm. yes imperfection factor alpha for buckling class C, alpha is equal to 0.49. Therefore, if I substitute that, uh, if I substitute, right, alpha is equal to 0.49. Now, I'll substitute all these inputs into this formula, into this formula of pi, right? Just now, we have seen that formula pi is given by this formula, 0.5, 1 plus alpha. Now, alpha is equal to 0.49. And lambda E, effective standard ratio, 1.397. We already seen minus 0.2. As 1.397 whole square, it works out say 1.77. Therefore, sub back substituting these, back substituting these in the above formula, FCD is equal to FI divided by FI is 250 divided by gamma m naught. Partial safety factor for this yield stress is equal to 1.1 divided by 1. 1.77. Just now we have calculated that divided by square root of, uh, sorry, uh, plus square root of 1.77 whole square minus 1.397. 1.397. This whole square that works out say 79.55 MPA but it should be less than or equal to it should be less than as per this code should be less than or equal to 
f i divided by gamma m naught that is the maximum permissible stress is 227.27 therefore okay let us say if this value is equal to 279.55 then that is not acceptable you just restrict it to 227.27 students right therefore this stress is acceptable is uh, less than the permissible maximum permissible design stress therefore the design compressive strength of this angle angle which, which is connected by means of two bolts which are presumed to be fixed by virtue of the fixity right therefore p is equal to ae multiplied by fcd whereas we already seen the effective area itself is grass area 1167 for this angle section that multiplied by 79.55 divided by 10 to the power 3 it now also says 92.83 kN this angle 100 by 100 of thickness 6 mm can carry 92 92.83 kN load if it all is connected by means of two bolts assuming the ends to be fixed the assuming the ends to be fixed now let us change the assumption right change the assumption right assuming the ends to be hinged how when it can be hinged students right uh, now let me say let me show this right uh, schematically right therefore if right here if i am using for connection the high strength friction grip bolts right here two and here two then it is presumed to be fixed right indeed if i am using here uh, for connection of the gusset plate with the connection of the gusset plate if i am just using ordinary black bolts like these right ordinary black bolts right at the ends so then then the uh, then we can say that they are um, presumed to be hinged right not totally fixed partially fixed or it may be assumed as hinged therefore if i change that assumption student now how the effect on the compressive strength that now will examine therefore connected by some ordinary black bolts like this student right? therefore from this table 12 just now we have seen from page number uh, 48 uh, from page number 48 let me go to that um, ias 800 uh, page number 48 yes now this is of the uh, page number 48 my student mm. yes right therefore when two number of ordinary blow bolts are used right then they are presumed to be hinged therefore in such a case k1 is equal to 0.7 and k2 is equal to 0.6 and k3 is equal to point, uh, k3 is equal to 5 i am just recalling those values here i have just recalled and substituting these substituting these uh, into the above formula right the effective stress ratio will now work out say square root of 0.7 because k1 is equal to 0.7 plus k2 um, 0.6 multiplied by uh, multiplied by lambda vv lambda vv lambda psi will not change right they will remain the same for the entire problem 1.73 one whole square plus k3 5 multiplied by 0.1875 whole square it works out say 1.635 therefore this pi is equal to 0.5 upon substitution into this formula right into this formula now i'll get uh, this um, pi right as a 0.5 0.5 multiplied by 1 plus alpha now alpha is equal to uh, 0.49 multiplied by um, lambda e 1.635 minus 0.2 plus lambda e whole square it works out say 2.188 therefore the permissible design compressive stress fcd is equal to 250 divided by 1.1 divided by divided by this value is equal to pi now i do have this pi the square root of pi square plus lambda square pi is equal to 2.11 uh, 2.188 the square root of 2.188 whole square minus this lambda e 1.635 whole square it works out as 62.4 which is much less than the maximum permissible compressive stress of 227 mpa therefore okay means I can find out the design compressive strength P is equal to A E multiplied by F C D as 1167 is the cross area multiplied by 62.4 that will be 10 to the power 3. It works out as 72.87 kilo newton, right? However, just by changing the assumption, right, or by changing the bolts from the high strength friction grip bolts, high strength friction grip bolts to the ordinary black bolts. to ordinary black bolts now we can see that the reduction the reduction in the load carrying capacity or compressive 
strength, compressive strength is equal to 92.83 minus 72.82, approximately 20 kN student, right? Almost we can say that 20 divided by 92.83 means roughly it is 21.5 percent is the reduction, right? Just by changing the bolts from high strength friction grip bolts to ordinary black bolts. Therefore, that indicates the importance of the bolts, the bolts, right? Now, let us move to the uh, next bit. That is the uh, answer of the first bit student. Uh, the second bit is that each end is connected by means of one bolt only. Now, let me go to this uh, schematic. Let me go to this schematic student. Right? This is a uh, pre, uh, just now we have seen, just now we have seen, right? Using uh, two, two bolts, right? Using two bolts connected to one side of a gazette plate. Now, what now I am trying to do? This is how we have just done using two bolts, student. If I use, right, just now I have seen this using two bolts, right? Two bolts. If, if I use, if I use uh, the single bolt, single bolt like this, right? What will happen, right? Right, like this. If I use only single bolt, single bolt, then what is the chain? What is the chain in the compression load carrying capacity or compressive design compressive stress? Right? Therefore, uh, assuming the ends to be fixed, if, if I use the high strength friction grip bolts, then obviously even single bolt is sufficient to have the load. Uh, sorry, the load is transferred by means of friction. Therefore, it is presumed to be fixed, fixed, right? Therefore. In such a case, we already know lambda V is equal to 1.731 uh, and lambda size is equal to 0.1875. However, from this table 12, from page number 48, for single bolt with fixed end condition, let me go to that uh, same table, page number 48 student, right? Therefore, this is how for single bolt, 0.7, K1 is equal to 0.75, K2 is equal to 0.35 and K3 is equal to 20. I am just recalling those, therefore, they are just recalled here. And substituting with now we'll get the effective standardized ratio as square root of 0.75 plus 0.35 multiplied by 0.731 whole square plus 20 multiplied by 0.1875 whole square. It is 1.582. Therefore, pi is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 1.49 multiplied by 1.582 minus 0.2 plus 1.582 whole square. It works out to 2.09. Therefore, the design permissible design composition stress is equal to F I divided by one point uh, gamma I not two fifty divided by one point one plus plus pi pi is equal to two point zero five plus pi square root of pi square minus sorry pi square plus uh, minus lambda square therefore two point zero nine whole square minus lambda is one point five eight two whole square it works out to sixty five point seven six which is much less than the maximum permissible uh, uh, composition stress is equal to two point seven therefore it is okay. Hence, I can use that value for calculation of the design composition strength FPD is equal to AE multiplied by FCD. Therefore, AE is equal to 1167 multiplied by 65.76 divided by 10 power 3. It works out to 75.76.75. How is making note that the decrease in the composition strength with respect to, I am just comparing this with respect to, if I am connecting by instead of single bolt, if I am connecting the same high strength friction grip bolts using two bolts. Therefore, now we can see that when I am using HS FG bolts, two bolts, it, it can carry 92.83 kN. Whereas if I am using only single bolt, single bolt, then it is just carrying 76.75 means 16.08 kN is, is the reduction in the load or that divided by 92.83, it works out approximately. 17.3 is the reduction in the strength, reduction in the strength, right? Almost, right? Therefore, even just one bolt, pro providing one bolt will improve the strength by approximately 17.3 percentage, right? Just make note of student, right? Whereas, now if I change my assumption, assuming the ends to be hinged, if at all they are connected by means of these black bolts, right? Therefore, from this table 12, page number 48, for single bolts with hinged conditions, now I have this K1, K2, K3, is just now we have seen that table, right? They are respectively 1.25 and 0.5 and 60 respectively. Therefore, they are now noted down here, K1, K2, K3, hence uh, the effective standardization lambda E is equal to square root of 1.2 
plus 0.5 multiplied by 1.731 whole square plus 60 multiplied by 0.1875 whole square. That works out to 2.203. Therefore, pi is equal to 0.5 multiplied by 1 plus 0.49 multiplied by 2.205 minus 0.2 because lambda e minus 0.2 plus lambda e whole square 2.203 whole square. It works out to 3.41. Therefore, the design compressive stress uh, uh, is equal to 250 divided by 3.41, which is pi plus square root of pi square minus lambda e square, which is square root of 3.41 square minus 2.203 whole square. That works out to 37.9, so uh, 37.8 approximately, which is much less than 227.27. Therefore, it is okay. Hence, design compressive stress P D is equal to A E multiplied by F C D. A is the gross area 1167 that of this uh, single angle section student right multiplied by 37.79 divided by 10 to the power 3 which works out 44.11 kilo newton however if i am comparing this the decrease in the compressive strength when compared to that of if at all they are connected by means of hsfg bolts two bolts it could it could have carried 92.83 but because you are just providing one ordinary bolt, ordinary bolt or normal bolt or just normal bolt, right? Therefore, it is carrying that to one single bolt only, one single bolt only. Therefore, it is carrying 44.11. The difference is equal to 48.72. Therefore, now you can see there is a tremendous reduction, 52.5 percentage is not, not that um, uh, insignificant value. It is a quite significant value, student. Right? Almost uh, roughly 53 percent is the reduction in the strength when compared to that of the two bolts of HSFG, just one bolt of normal black bolt. Almost roughly 53 percent is the reduction in strength. Right? That is how it shows the importance of the the bolts, the bolts as well as their numbers, their numbers. Right? Hardly one bolt is uh, costing not that much, but however. Here, the, um, the efficiency of the section will improve abnormally, right? Now, the last bit is that each end is connected by means of the weld, the weld, right? If it all is connected by means of the weld student like this, right? Here, along all this, right? In such a case, right? However, the code is silent. Therefore, now, IS 800 uh, 2000, sorry, uh, uh, 2007 says that design strength of the welder strut will be same as that of the uh, uh, connection done by means of the two bolts and assuming it has to be fixed in the condition but we already solved that is the very first bit therefore there we got the design compressive strength PD or design compressive load is equal to 92.83 kilo newton right that is of the very first problem the section was given we have calculated the design compressive strength or design compressive load design compressive load of this section however now if you understood uh, that problem student now let us move to the second problem right wherein in the second problem what is now given is a section is uh, a load is given load is given you are propose you are supposed to propose a section as well as you are supposed to uh, calculate the number of bolts as well as check the adequacy of the section of the proposed section that is of the total design problem it is not uh, just uh, finding out the strength but it is a design problem student now let us see this a uh, design problem at a quicker pace student right because you all solved one problem therefore now let us see the uh, problem design a single angle discontinuous strut to carry a factored axial load uh, axial compressive load of 65 kilo newton the length of the strut is 3 meters between the intersections. It is connected to 12 mm thick gusset plate by 20 mm diameter bolt. 20 mm diameter bolt of 4.6 great bolts. 4.6 great bolts, like you said, and use uh, steel of FE 410 grade steel, right? Now let us see what is the data given student, right? For FE 410 grade steel, we know already that. Uh, ultimate strength is equal to 410 that's right 410 newton per mm square or mega pascal and the yield stress is equal to 250 newton per mm square and the partial safety factor for this fi is equal to 1.1 1.1 whereas uh, for fu it is equal to 1.25 from table 5 of ih 800 2007 right then also for the ordinary black bolts of 4.6 grade 
from IIS 800 2007 table 1 from table 1 page number 13 right there I do have uh, the ultimate strength of the bolt is equal to 400 let me go to that page number 13 student right uh, let me go to that page number 13 yes 13 mm. yes these are the tensile properties of the uh, structural uh, products right I do have 4.6 where for that 4.6 ultimate tensile strength stress is equal to 400 megapascals this is what we have just noted down right and also from table 5 page number 30 let me go to that page number 30 student right what are the partial safety factors let me go to that page number 30 therefore uh, I'll move to page number 30 yes uh, this is that page number 30 where I do have the partial safety factors right the uh, partial safety factors for the material right just now we have seen gamma m0 is equal to 1.1 for the material uh, as well as uh, against the uh, uh, governed by the yielding gamma m0 is equal to 1.1 whereas which is governed by the ultimate stress gamma m1 is equal to 1.25 whereas for this bolt uh, the uh, shop fabricated bolts right where we are having this bolts are called the bearing bolts, bearing type bolts, right? Whereas for the friction bolts also, it is 1.25 if at all it is shaft fabricated. Therefore, this is how I do have the assumption 1.25. I just noted down those uh, gamma m0 is equal to 1.1, gamma mb is equal to 1.25, and gamma m1 is equal to 1.25. And also, let me go to this ISO 1367 part 3, part 3 for 20 mm dia bolts from. Um, for 20 mm dia bolts from IS 1367 part 3 part 3 I am there in that uh, part 3 student page number 9 uh, page number 9 these are the table 6 minimum ultimate tensile uh, loads right for M20 the effect no nominal stress area is equal to 245 or otherwise also what you can do is is approximately equal to uh, a and B is equal to 0.78 multiplied by gross area 5 by 4 uh, D square or 0.78 multiplied by 314 will work out 245. If you don't have access to this IS 1367 page number 9, then you can calculate using this A and B is approximately equal to 0.78 gross area, gross area. And also from table 19 page number 73, let me go to this IS 800 page number 73 student right. Uh, page number 73 yes and then in that uh, connections right wherein for uh, table 19 uh, clearances for the fastener holes right I do have 16 to 22 mm diabolts therefore for standard clearance holes this is how only 2 mm is the extra extra right uh, this uh, hole diameter is 2 mm extra compared to that of the uh, diameter of the nominal diameter, nominal diameter of this bolt, nominal diameter of this bolt. Therefore, now diameter of the hole DH or DO is equal to 22, and ultimate load is already given that you propose. You propose uh, the section to resist a factored load. Please make a note it is already factored at right? PU. You need not multiply with the uh, factor of safety for the dead load and level load as 1.5. Please make a note. And also, if I go to this class 10.2.2, page number 73, page number 73. Let me go to this page number 73, student. Yes, I am there in the same page number 73. Minimum spacing, right? Pitch shall not be less than 2.5 times the nominal diameter of the fasteners, and the maximum spacing should, uh, however, including the top of the uh, 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 Sorry, for the compression member, it should not be more than 20 or 200 mm, whichever is less for the compression members. Therefore, I am just recalling this. And also, from the same page, the edge distance is also given, right? And now, the minimum edge distance is given as 1.5 times the whole diameter, right? And maximum uh, edge distance is also mentioned. Therefore, I will recall these to calculate the further inputs that are required. Therefore, pitch should not be less than 2.5 times nominal diameter. Uh, 50 and it should not be greater than 12 times the thickness. Thickness of the gazette plate is only now known. Still, we have not fixed what is the section of this uh, angle section 
obviously that section thickness will be less but i don't have uh, any uh, thickness therefore i am taking just 12 mm as the uh, minimum thickness as of now therefore 12 mm to 12 144 or 200 mm out of this 144 is minimum therefore there is a maximum pitch is 144 minimum pitch is 50 however i will proceed with a, a pitch of 50 mm Similarly, from this class 10.2.4 page number 74, just now we have seen that edge distance should not be less than 1.5 times the diameter of the hole 33 mm. I'll stick, stick it to it, right? To 33 mm only. Also, from table 10, page number 44, from uh, table 10, page number 44, the previous problem also we have seen this angle section, the buckling class about any axis is equal to C, is the buckling class is C. Therefore, now let us fix a trial section. A trial section. What should be the trial section? Therefore, uh, now assuming the stiffness ratio as 120, because the load given is just 65 kilonewton, which is not that heavy load student. Therefore, I can assume a moderate, a moderate stiffness ratio of lambda is equal to our medium stiffness ratio of 120. Right. Therefore, from table 9C of page number 42. Let me go to that page number for page number 42 students. Right. Hmm, it is a page number 42. Yes, 42. Yes, and then in the page number 42, because it is the buckling class C, therefore, and for F I is equal to 250, for F I is equal to 250, and uh, lambda is equal to 120. 120, I do have F C D. The design composition stress is equal to 83.7. I have just noted down that value, therefore. FCD is equal to 83.7, therefore the area of the cross section required A is equal to uh, PU divided by FCD. It works out as 65 in 10 to power 3 divided by 83.7. It is approximately 777 mm square. Whereas uh, the cross area of the cross section required for this section to please increase by 25 to 50 percentage so that the designs will be safe. However, I want to optimize the section, therefore I'll just increase by 25 percentage. If it is failing, then I'll increase in the next step by uh, say some 35 percentage more, or even if it is failing, then I'll increase by 50 percentage. But as a student, you just try with the 50 percentage more area so that another iteration is not needed, right? However, if you are uh, if you want to optimize the section, you just start with the minimum bare uh, 25 percentage value only, right? Therefore, now the grass area. Uh, for this trial section required is about 1.25 mm to 777, say approximately 971 mm square. However, if I go to SP61 1964, which is the structural engineer's handbook 1, table 3, table 3, page number 10. Let me go to the table 3, page number 10, student. I am uh, providing ISA 70 by 70 by 8. Let me go to the table 10, SP61, SP61. We go to the table 10, sorry, uh, this uh, table um, wherein I do have ISA, uh, uh, ISA 70 by 70 by 8, 70 by 70 by 8. Let me check that value, right? This is a uh, 77 by 70 by yes, and then in that uh, table, right? Whereas in this uh, table, I do have 70 by 70 by. 5, 6 mm, yes, this one, right, where the sectional area is equal to 8.06, 8.06 for 6 mm, whereas how much is required, how much is required is 971, therefore that will not be sufficient, therefore what now I will do is, I will proceed with a thickness of 8 mm, 8 mm, therefore for which, for which 8 mm, the area is 10.58 centimeter square, therefore 1058 which is just greater than, just greater than the required value, which is just greater than the required value of 971, therefore it should be okay. If it is okay, then just make it out of this minimum radius of variation from the same table, right? Therefore, that is what it is, uh, means this is the third third property student, right? Uh, therefore, that is how the third property, the minimum radius of variation, right? Out of all this, 21.2, uh, 20, uh, 26.7, 13.5, uh, uh, right? 13.5 is the minimum value. Therefore, uh, is the minimum radius of variation about minor minor axis? Minor axis is RVV is the min R min 13.5. Therefore, it is okay. And also from IS 800 2007, as it is silent about the effective length of the 
single angle single angle therefore i am assuming k is equal to 1 therefore the effective length itself is 1 multiplied by 3 is equal to 3 meters that is how it is a 3 meters right that then however unless you know how many number of bolts are need to be provided you can't say what are these k1 k2 k3 values therefore they depends upon the number of bolts and the fixity the second one not only the number of bolts also on the fixity first let us uh, uh, calculate how many number of bolts are required therefore i am there in the next subheading as the bolted connections bolted connections right whereas from this class 10.3.3 page number 75 let me go to this page number 75 student right uh, page number 75 of is 800 of is 800 page number 70 5 page this is page number 75 yes page number 75 means uh, uh, this is 75 yes this is the shear capacity of the bolt right vdsb is equal to vnsb divided by gamma mb where vnsb is given by fu divided by root 3 multiplied by nn multiplied by anb plus ns multiplied by asb right therefore now I do have, I just noted down this uh, formula student, right? Therefore, I do have A and B is equal to 245 multiplied by FUB. Uh, we do have the ordinary black bolts, ordinary black bolts only, right? And the yield stress of these bolts is equal to 400 MPA, right? That divided by root 3 multiplied by, uh, in the denominator 1.25, that divided by 10 to power 3. It works out 45.26 kilo Newton. However, the thickness uh, thickness for the uh, bearing, thickness for the bearing, T is equal to either 8 mm for the angle, whereas for the gusset plate it is 12 mm. Out of these two, right, 8 mm will fail first in bearing, in bearing criteria, right. Therefore, 8 mm is the thickness minimum, right. And also from class 10.3.4, page number 75, from the same, from the same page student, right, this is how the bearing capacity of the bolts is given by VDPB is equal to VNPB divided by gamma MB where VNPB nominal bearing strength of the bolt is equal to 2.5 KB DTFU where KB is the smaller of these four criteria 1 it will be 3D naught 2 P divided by 3D naught minus 0.25 3 FU P divided by FU divided and last one is 1 1 right therefore now I, I just recall this formula hence KB what is that KB we already fixed what is edge distance e is equal to 33 divided by 3d naught 3 multiplied by the diameter of the hole 22 mm 22 mm therefore it works out from the first criteria 0.5 the second criteria p divided by 3d naught 50 divided by 3 multiplied by 22 minus 0.25 that is also 0 0.5 from the third criteria right 400 divided by 410 it works out say 0.975 the last criteria is upper bound value is equal to unit value 100 percentage therefore out of all these four the minimum value either is that of the first or second criteria. Therefore, KB is equal to 0.5. Hence, the design bearing strength of the bolt, this uh, ordinary black bolt, VDPB is equal to 2.5 KB DTFU. Upon substitution, it works out 2.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 20. It's the diameter of this whole uh, bolt multiplied by thickness 8 multiplied by 400 divided by 1.25. That whole divided by 10 to power 3. It works out say 64 kilo newton. However, the bolt value is least of these two criteria 45.26 or 64 which one is minimum however it is governed in shear because that is there in single shear nn is equal to 1 in single shear please make a note that it is in single shear right it is in single shear criteria only right that therefore the number of bolts required n is equal to pu divided by uh, b uh, um, the factor load is equal to 65 divided by 45.26 it works out as a 1.44 but uh, we should say the next integer as a 2 or say 2 number of bolts 220 mm dia bolts for connection of this angle with that of the gusset plate like this right that with that of the gusset plate right with that of this gusset plate 2 bolts 2 bolts right and for once I get this right now let us uh, check for the compressive strength of the or adequacy of the section. Adequacy of this section. Whether we have already proposed some section, uh, I, I say 
70 by 70 by 8 we also propose the number of bolts that for these bolts along with this section can it carry the load factor load of 65 kiloton or not hence there is a check for the adequacy of the section right however from table 12 page number 48 assuming fixed ends we already seen in the previous um, problem also student that for their k1 is equal to 0.2 k2 is equal to 0.35 and k3 is equal to 20 and also we also seen this from table 7 page number 35 for c buckling class for imperfection factor is equal to 0.49 the same was also applicable for the previous problem therefore please revisit it and also from class 7.5.1.2 page number 48 we also see this equivalent standards ratio was given by this lambda is equal to square root of k1 plus k2 uh, lambda vv square plus k3 multiplied by lambda psi square where lambda vv is equal to l divided by r vv divided by epsilon square root of square root of pi square e divided by 250 upon substitution it works out say 3000 divided by 13.5 divided by 1 square root of pi square multiplied by 2.2 uh, 2 into the power 5 divided by 250 or say it is uh, approximately 2.5008 where epsilon is the stress ratio which is equal to 250 divided by fi itself is 250 therefore 1 and also lambda psi is b1 plus b2 both both connected as well as uh, outstanding legs both are 70 and 70 mm and its thickness is equal to 8 mm therefore 70 plus 70 uh, divided by uh, no, 2 multiplied by 8 that divided by 1 square root of pi square multiplied by 2 into the power 5 divided by 250 it works out to 0.0985 therefore the effective sternness ratio is equal to square root of 0.2 plus 0.35 multiplied by 2.5008 whole square plus 20 multiplied by 0 0.0985 whole square it works out to 1.6071 hence from class 7.1.2.1 page number 34 just now we have seen the previous problem that pi is equal to 0.5 plus 1 plus alpha multiplied by lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda whole square upon substitution it works out 0.5 plus 1.49 multiplied by 1.6071 minus 0.2 plus 1.6071 whole square it is around 2.136 therefore the permissible compressive stress our design compressive stress is equal to fi divided by gamma m naught 250 divided by 1.1 divided by pi 2.138 plus square root of pi square minus lambda square 2.136 whole square minus 1.607 whole square it works out as 64.14 but it should be less than r equal to the maximum permissible value of of uh, this value of fi divided by gamma m naught that works out say 227.27 therefore this is okay. Hence, the design compressive strength of this angle proposed PD is equal to AE multiplied by FCD. AE is already 1058 mm square that multiplied by 64.14 that would be 10 power 3. It works out as 67.86 kN, which is just greater than 65 kN. Hardly, right? Hardly just greater than 2. Point, uh, the difference is just 2.86 only. 2.86 only, right? Therefore, it is okay. Therefore, um, uh, uh, even after assuming it to be fixed, however, if the same problem is assumed with, say, hinge in any condition, obviously, this will not be greater than 65 students, right? That is all the, the impact on the final result. Therefore, with the fixed end condition only, it is just greater than. Means, if you are using high strength friction grip bolts, then only it is correct. But, however, if you are using the ordinary black bolts, then this design will once again fail, right? This design will once again fail, right? Therefore, it requires another iteration, right? Therefore, Therefore hence the provided ISA 70 by 70, 70 by 8, by 8 mm, mm connected to the uh, 20 mm, mm thick uh, gusset plate by 220 mm, mm uh, ordinary, uh, uh, sorry, uh, two, uh, sorry, this 220 mm. mm this 220 mm uh, are there black bolts only but they are assumed to be fixed assumed to be fixed right at a pitch of 50 mm and at a distance of 33 mm right however however here i am assuming these ordinary black bolts as fixed presuming that they are maintained at regular intervals if they are maintained at regular intervals then only then only we can assume so otherwise we cannot assume so like this right? they are connected by means of 
डिजाइन ऑफ डबल एंगल स्ट्रक्स टिल देन बाय बाय स्टूडेंट्स